We began this project because we noticed um, large-scale declines in oysters in this area. 66% uh, of all oyster bars have disappeared in 30 years. And of the offshore bars, which are the most important um, economically, and in some sense ecologically, 88% have disappeared in 30 years. And this is very surprising given the fact that this is the largest undeveloped stretch of coastline in the United States. The Cedar Key Big Bend area is very untouched and very well preserved. The eastern oysters live in estuaries, places where salt and fresh water mix. These oysters were declining because um, they weren't getting enough fresh water. Things were generally too saline and that was because the amount of water coming out of the rivers was too little. Uh, that's partly due to low rainfall, but it's also in large part due to human use of fresh water. Oyster reefs were declining because they would um, have several years in a row where they had high mortality and no recruitment by young oysters. Once that happens, enough of the oysters die that the shells become, uh, start to collapse and get rocked around by the, by the waves and become buried in sediment. And pretty soon, after three or four years, you're left with um, a mostly sandbar. Sandbar is a place where young oysters just can't get established. There's no refuge for them and there's nothing to hold on to. But the question became, so what could we build that would allow oysters to come back time and again? And we came up with two things which were locally available. One is limestone boulders. So not little rock, big rock. So those limestone boulders were very important for, um, for the stability of the structure and also by piling them up on each other you create spaces within the, the reef that is what the oysters can survive in. They need tiny spaces for tiny little oysters to be able to survive. The second was clam bags. Clams are grown in bags in aquaculture operations in and around Cedar Key and that's a huge industry there. But sometimes those clams die. Very often what happens is that all that dead clam shell gets colonized by oysters. And the bags become um, essentially bags full of oysters. Uh, we've measured as much as 8,000 per bag, um, which is a lot of little oysters. And those seem like very good building blocks for oyster reefs. These oyster reefs, though, uh, come in long chains and the chains are approximately parallel to the coast. That um, suggested to us uh, that they might actually be retaining some of the fresh water that comes to the coast from inland. In other words, forming kind of a leaky dam. This work illustrates very clearly that you could, if you wanted to, build chains of oyster reefs in a way to funnel water around in estuaries and make the best use of that fresh water. What we would like to do is to actually rest restore entire sections of reef. So we've restored little postage stamp parts um, and finding that we're getting within about a year and a half, we're now in the 90th percentile of oyster densities uh, for restoration sites in the Gulf of Mexico. So it's pretty fast. It's very gratifying to see that. I think the connections between the oyster community and the human community is really strong humans will really benefit directly from that increased fresh water retention, from the wave abatement, from the fishing. So I think it's really uh, something that would be interesting to watch.